Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're joining us from. Welcome to today's webinar, Driving Energy Efficiency Globally with Edge Data Storage and Orchestration, a GB Food Success Story. My name is Alexandra Jordan, and I will be your host today. Our webinar today will last approximately 45 minutes, followed by a 15-minute Q&A session. We will cover a true success story about GB Foods, a global leader in the food and beverage industry known for its iconic brands and innovative products. In this webinar, you will learn how GB Foods optimized energy usage and reduced waste across 19 factories using real-time data processing with Aviva EDS and Barbara's Edge Management Tool. You will also learn how they overcame scaling and security challenges, built a future-ready Edge infrastructure, and achieved significant cost savings while supporting sustainability goals. Our presenters for today's are Uriol Mesia, IT Digital Hub Manager at GB Foods, and David Puron, CEO at Barbara. And Ted Combs is our Global Consumer Products Industry Principal at Aviva, and he will be our moderator. But before we begin, let me cover a few housekeeping items. And as you can see on your slide right now, um, we have our, we're using the ON24 webinar platform. And the first thing you need to know is that all of you have been muted in order to prevent unwanted noise. And in your platform, you will see that at the bottom of your screen, there are multiple application widgets that you can use. All of the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop experience. You can expand your slide area, you can maximize the full screen just by clicking the arrows on the top right corner. The session will uh, last approximately 45 minutes, again, followed by a 15-minute Q&A and, and for, followed by a 15-minute uh, question and answer session. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them through the Q&A widget that you find in your platform. It's found at the bottom of your screen. You can participate in the Q&A session by asking questions at any time during the webinar. We will try to answer your questions in the order in which we receive them. But if we don't answer your question, don't worry, we'll get to you and answer your question via email. Now, please know that there's also um, several handouts that we have included for you uh, that are available in the resources widget in your webinar platform. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you find useful, including the webinar's presentation. Now, for best viewing experience, um, if you have not already um, logged in correctly, we recommend using the Google Chrome and closing any programs or browser sessions during uh, running in their background as these can cause some um, bandwidth issues. And now, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and introduce our speakers. Tom, please go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Alex. And thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. A special thank you to Ariel and David for sharing their successful work together. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it, and uh, I really enjoy it. So maybe just uh, before we get going, a few remarks um, to set to the stage. Uh, if you're not familiar with Aviva, we are a very large leading industrial software firm. Uh, we have a few brands that you may also be familiar with, such as Pi and Wonderware, so forth. We're a global organization, and we cover many, many industry verticals. <clears throat> Consumer products is one of our large ones. Um, when I say consumer products, essentially what we're talking about is food and bev, uh, plus home and personal care products, those three sub-segments I often think of as CPG. And then in addition to that, we also include agra business. So all of those combined would be what we consider consumer products. As you can see by this slide, there are a number of logos represented, just a few. We actually have over 800 consumer products customers across the globe in just in every region, um, all different sizes and uh, covering all of those sub-verticals that I referred to. 
Now, consumer products uh, obviously is a very large industry. It's been around forever, and we all, as consumers, have good familiarity with it. I just wanted to touch on a couple of things, talk about some of the headwinds or challenges that exist within the industry that uh, our two uh, guests uh, are helping us deal with. Um, as you uh, are all probably well aware, there is inflation that is significant, driven by a number of factors. Um, supply chain disruption, it occurred dramatically with COVID, but uh, there are still some lingering challenges uh, caused by a number of factors. Sustainability and provenance is a top issue for this industry. Uh, provenance, what I'm referring to there, is the source of the of the product or perhaps where the ingredients came from, um, how an animal might have been uh, treated, whether it was caged or free range, things like that. Um, the need for a changing product portfolio. This industry obviously is driven by the demands of the consumer, their preferences, and they're fickle, they change, and it's really um, quite a challenge to try to meet those to be agile, and that has a, a big impact on the entire supply chain. And then um, the changing workforce. So uh, as I engage with consumer products companies over the last couple of years, this has just risen in terms of priority. For a while there, I always thought the conversation would be about efficiency and agility and maybe uh, energy or sustainability, but I've been corrected a couple of times. Like, no, 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 we'd like to work, uh, elevate the workforce issue to the top. Um, and it's because so many... Uh, baby boomers, if you will, are retiring, and we have uh, younger digital natives that are coming in, and uh, it's, uh, it's less attractive unless an organization has kind of a state-of-the-art modern uh, technical environment to come into, and so we, uh, we try to help with that. So that's a little bit of a backdrop, and um, I think what, uh, what we're going to see is that this next story uh, helps address that uh, also in a, a new environment, if you will. So in, in the past, it was very much about uh, a traditional linear supply chain. And uh, organizations would focus on within the supply chain, maybe, maybe just manufacturing operations. Maybe it was just one plant location. And um, a couple of things have happened with all those pressures I talked about on the previous slide is forcing companies to look for new ways to, to be successful. Um, that combined with the fact that we have some really wonderful new technologies that now we can now bring to bear on this, uh, on in, into this environment. And those technologies create additional opportunities. And what we are observing, I'm sure you are too, is that companies are focusing on um, pursuing better ways of operating within the ecosystem. So it's, it's kind of moved from a linear supply chain to more of a, a network, um, a, a supply network. And so, you know, you see more and more use cases and studies of organizations trying to figure out how to work with their suppliers, how to work with their distributors, um, et cetera, and so forth. And they really have an eye all the way from the consumer back and forth, and, uh, you know, circular economy is important. So what well, so what of that is, is how do organizations compete effectively within that environment? How do you leverage that? How do you connect? How do you do it in a secure fashion? How do you do it using modern technologies? How do you do it um, effectively? And so today's story is, is a great example of how a really well-run organization, TV Foods, partnered with a really excellent uh, technology firm, Barbara, to begin that bit of a journey. And they're going to talk about where they started, how they started, and then they're also going to um, – you'll see and hopefully we get to talk about the importance of this infrastructure this 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 architecture that they've created that not only helped them with the case study today but is also going to help them for other uh, ventures and so forth so with that i'd like to turn it over to oriel who will uh, kick us off thank you thank you ted so before going into the details uh, of our success case know that as you mentioned, no, it's based not uh, well with the technologies of Barbara and Aviva PI. I would like to do a brief introduction of who we are. What is GV Foods? So GV Foods is a it's a food a condiments a production company. We are based in Barcelona in Spain, but we are present in more than fifty countries and we have more than thirty local brands. From that local brands, some of them are quite historical, are well known in Europe and Africa, 
and some of them also have been present in, in our consumers' kitchens during more than 150 years. So, GB Foods, it's committed to, the, to lead the way towards a more sustainable future in the food industry. And the optimization of resources, of all resources, it's a relevant pillar, no? And because of it, we have defined the need to implement our energy monitoring project, no? which is the project we will deep dive during this, during this webinar. So why we have defined the need to implement this project? It's, it was mainly because two main challenges. First one, it is because the lack of visibility into our energy consumptions in our operational processes and also because the complexity to gather data from our factories, not because the wide amount of different equipments and devices which are present in our factories. Because of that, as I said, no, we have implemented the energy monitoring solution, which is based uh, in Barbara technology and Aveva PI solution. And uh, well, thanks to, thanks to the solution, even though the project is still running, we can say that we are getting our first results, which are giving our factories the right tools to analyze and identify efficiencies, and also to implement improvements backed by reliable data. And also the main objective, which is reducing our energy costs and reducing our CO2 consumption. So going into the details of our challenges, no, as I was saying, no first challenge, it's giving visibility no, into, into our energy consumptions. No? So our, our first challenge, it was delivering tools for our factories so they can analyze no, all of that data surrounding energy consumption. And also the complex, uh, the complexity around gathering data from uh, the industrial processes. No? In our case, we have a wide variety of equipment, industrial equipment, from water counters, electricity counters, PLCs, sensors, some specific machines. Uh, all of that different machines were spread 17 factories from Europe and Africa, which made the process very difficult for us. No? And at the same time, we would like, we wanted to, to be uh, compliant with all the security policies while deploying innovative solutions suits our edge infrastructure. So, uh, we would like also to know a little bit more about you. Uh, so, the idea during the webinar is also to, to release some questions. So, the first one is, what stage of that acquisition are you at the moment? We have nothing at all, but we'd like to learn more. A, we are collecting and processing data locally through traditional systems. B, we are using traditional systems, but we are also uh, using edge infrastructure technology. So please submit the question during the next one minute because we would like to know a little bit more. Okay, so thank you so much for your answers. I see that there is, there is a, a lot of, of variety also in the answers, but uh, I would say this is normal. Uh, in GV Foods, we are at the, sep at the second step, and we are now advancing and including an alternative to our SCADA uh, architecture. No? So we will, we will deep dive a little bit more 
on, on why we have decided to go for an edge infrastructure in that project. So we, we will go deeper into our architecture, the one we have deployed for the project. We will focus speci specifically in that edge infrastructure solution. First of all, as we all know, we have our OT layer in which we, are, we, in which we have all of our industrial devices with that wide variety of amount of sources. And the idea of having that edge infrastructure for GB Foods was to avoid the generation, the generation of silos and the number of ad hoc solutions to access all of that data, no? And uh, being able to, to add new use cases based on that data. Over that layer, we also have our OT infrastructure. In that layer, we would like, as we were asking in, in the first question, we would like to add an alternative to our SCAD architecture. We would like to be able to read any data from any data source so we can use all of the available information in our factories to cover with the different needs, the, the needs that we already know that we have in our factories. And because of that, this, is, this was the main reason we have deployed that edge solution, including IIoT capabilities uh, to allow us having the possibility to read that data from any kind of device and also enabling the possibility to read it in real time. Then another question, which was, which of the following tasks do you find, do you find most challenging in that acquisition? A, variety of industrial equipments or protocols. B, industrial data security. C, data modeling and global standardization. Or D, other challenges. Please, we would like to know a little bit more also from you. Okay, so thank you also for the answers. In that case, I think the answers are focused specifically on that first one, which is the variety of industrial equipment or protocols, which is quite normal, I would say. It happened to us, as uh, I was saying, no? We have very different kind of devices, not only type of devices, but different families of devices, different brands. So, and finally, this is a clear challenge for, for all of us. Thank you. So what else? In order to control our edge infrastructure, we also have what we call the orchestrator, which, which is also part of the Barbara solution. This solution allows us to manage all of that infrastructure in our edge. Even though we have seven factories spread along Europe and Africa, we are able to manage all of that infrastructure from the same place, from the central in Barcelona. That way, we are able to reduce our number of trips and we can connect or disconnect any kind of device at any moment. So this is a quite advantage for us. And in order to sum up and to end the explanation of this success case, we would like also to, to sum up the benefits we are getting from this architecture, because sometimes we talk a lot about the business benefits, but uh, there are always very good benefits surrounding a good architecture. 
and a good definition on the technologies we are using in our projects. So in this case, the technology you have seen allows us to have, a, to have an, escal an escalable solution. So if we can add new use cases based on that data, if we want to add new factories, we can do it in an easy way. In the same way, we can do or we can operate uh, continuously. We can change things without affecting the rest of the factories, the rest of the use cases. We can change things in an autonomous way. Also, we are reducing our costs because we are defining only one way on top of the SCADA architecture to gather data from our industrial processes. So this definitely allows us to reduce costs in terms of infrastructure, licenses, and technology. Also, we reduce our risk because we have one to two solutions, only one to two solutions to access that data. We are not adding alternative technologies, alternative architectures that might be compromised because of a data breach. Also, we are improving our communications or bandwidth because with our infrastructure in the edge, we are able to process our data directly and close to where it's produced and sending it outside of the factories only when it's needed. And also, least, last but not least, the central management. So we can operate everything from Barcelona. Even though we have factories in Africa, in Europe, in a widespread area, we are going to manage all the communications, all the IT part central, which is also a great benefit for us. Also another, another question, one, one, more, one minute also to answer it, which is, what do you see as the most valuable benefit of adopting edge infrastructure for your operations? A, real-time decision-making with reduced latency. B, improve data security and regulatory compliance by keeping data on site. C, lower operational costs by reducing cloud dependency and bandwidth usage. D, scalability and flexibility to deploy applications closer to operations. And E, I'm not familiar with edge infrastructure, but would like to learn more. And now I will hand over to David, which will take the lead of the conversation and to explain you a little bit more about Barbara. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Riol. Um, so while, while you are um, answering the, uh, the question, um, I'm introducing myself. So I'm David Puron co-founder and, and CEO of Barbara. Um, and we are an, an edge computing provider. And yeah, edge is probably, everybody in the call has, has already heard about edge and edge computing because it's a, a hype term. But edge uh, allows uh, many, many um, use cases and, and many benefits into a, into a computing architecture. So in this question, we wanted to to learn from you, um, what are your, um, what do you think it will be most valuable from uh, from adopting edge? And what I can see is that is um, is quite a spread. So um, most of you identify the um, the the benefit of of doing real time decision making, which is exactly what we've been doing with GB Foods. Um, then uh, you also mentioned about scalability and flexibility to deploy application closer to operations. Um, so yeah, and some of you, 18% uh, said that you are not familiarized with fetch infrastructure, so that's good, because that's indeed what, what I'm going to explain a little bit um, today. And after this explanation, I will do a practical demo, so hopefully that will give you uh, a lot of information about what is edge computing, how it is uh, used, and, and how you may benefit from this. So Barbara is a, is a company headquartered in, in Spain as well, with offices in Madrid, Bilbao, and, and Valencia, and also presence in, in Germany. 
but customers all over the world. So we are working with great companies in the food and beverage sector like GB Foods, but we also work in, in different uh, other industries like uh, energy industry with customers like uh, Iberdrola, um, water industry with customers like Axiona, the pharma industry is great for us with, um, with people like GSK uh, using uh, Barbara and so on and so forth. If you think in all these industries, um, process manufacturing, um, utilities, water, and everything, all of them have very critical assets and assets that are distributed all over the world. So some of the brands that, that Aviva, uh, uh, Ted from Aviva was, uh, was showing in, in the uh, early part of the presentation, they can have tons or even hundreds of locations full of, um, of critical assets. So if you have to connect all these assets to a centralized infrastructure, there are always uh, challenges. So the first challenge is security. So um, GB Foods work with highly critical data. So not all the data can be uh, exposed outside the factory. So the, the factory needs to have trade secrets. The factory needs to, to preserve um, uh, personal data and many things. And when you upload data to, um, to centralized infrastructure and, and the cloud, for some data, this can present um, security issues. And there is a statistic saying that 61% of the organizations have experienced cloud security incidents during 2024. So cloud security is a very, very complex thing. And of course, uh, I'm not saying that um, companies shouldn't be using cloud. Actually, cloud is great. Cloud is flexible. But uh, when it comes to critical data, maybe you want some data to be processed outside the cloud. Right, so security is um, one of the main reasons why uh, an edge computing infrastructure may may sense. The second is latency. Um, in the best case, um, with a good network and everything, processing data in the cloud and and back can take up to three seconds. And this is uh, for relatively simple processing and relatively small uh, data. Uh, data sources and, and data databases. But if you uh, move into larger um, sets of data and everything, it can take up to minutes or even hours. So in some cases, like for example, energy efficiency, you really need real-time data. You really need to be accurate and have um, a lot of granularity on the data you are acquiring and, and the data you are processing. So latency or periodicity of the data can be uh, another reason to, um, to use an edge computing infrastructure. And last but not least, cost. So um, we all know that cloud is, is great. We all use cloud uh, a lot, but in some cases, uh, if you are addressing like really, really um, frequent data, uh, like 4,000, 5,000 values per second or large language models for, for the AI use cases and everything, cloud costs can, can go high. And then what many companies do is, is just uh, reduce the number of data that, that they send to, to the cloud. So with edge computing, um, this can be fixed. So uh, you can process and send to the cloud whatever is strictly necessary for your use case, but um, you can keep processing data at the edge on premises with, uh, with a lower cost for for some use cases and, and so on. So again, with this, I'm not saying at all that cloud is not useful at all. So um, actually, in, in many uh, in many cases, what we are deploying is hybrid architectures with, for example, Aviva Connect in the cloud, Aviva Pi on premises, and then Barbara Edge Computing on the OT network. So normally, this is the the um, um, the architectures that we deploy. But many, many companies are now discovering the power of edge computing, the power of installing applications in the OT network and deploying applications into the OT network, enhancing security, latency, and cost for some use cases. Um, 
So what Barbara does is helping companies like GB Foods to deploy, run, and manage applications in the OT network. So in one level, there is Aviva Connect, Aviva Pi. In the lower level, there is Barbara's infrastructure at the OT level, helping um, companies like GB Foods to deploy uh, applications there. Uh, why they deploy applications in the edge computing architecture? Uh, again, because of security, latency, or cost. So the applications that, that we deploy, and we will see some examples later, are applications that capture data, process data um, locally and everything. And in the case of GB Foods, as you will see, what we are deploying in the OT network is the Aviva Edge Data Store, which is a highly powerful application for data capturing and, and data uh, processing and, and ingestion. But the idea of, of, uh, of Barbara is to be able to remotely deploy and control applications in uh, hundreds or thousands of devices um, that are in remote locations. So uh, GB Foods Uriol was describing that in their project, they have um, 19 factories. Imagine that you need to, um, to install applications or configure sensors or configure data acquisition uh, every day in these uh, 19 factories the cost of operation, of sending people to the field, getting people on site, connect to those devices, configure them day by day, is huge. So with, um, with Barbara's platform, with the orchestration platform, we save all this money. We save all these resources, and, and we make the project a reality and, and an escalation. So um, we've spoken about um, cloud applications. We've spoken about on-prem applications. So we wanted to, to learn a little bit more about um, your typical projects, and we wanted to, uh, to ask you, where do you mostly deploy your data applications? A, are you primarily deploying those data applications on premises? B, are you using hybrid approaches? So are you deploying applications like databases and, and everything in the cloud as well as on premises? Or are you... Um, fully cloud-based um, applications. So please let us know uh, where are you deploying your applications, um, because that, that will indicate what level of, of maturity are you in the, uh, in the, um, uh, in the infrastructure and, and the deployments. So I will say, most of the companies are, are now in hybrid approaches, but let's see, let's see where, are, where are you. So yeah, as I was expecting, most of you are uh, in a hybrid approach. Some of you are fully cloud-based, so 14%. Um, uh, um, so I think uh, this is... Um, this is less and less common because of the reasons that I was saying, security, latency, um, scalability. And also some of you are, are deploying only on-premises. So yeah, for those of you who are deploying either only on-premises or, or fully cloud-based, I recommend to look into hybrid approaches, which is what um, GB Foods did. So um, I wanted to deep dive a little bit more before going into the into the demo, into, um, into Barbara's product. So um, Barbara allows to control remotely edge computing nodes. So the edge computing nodes are these type of devices that you have here uh, on the bottom part of the, of the screen. So you can see these are typical industrial uh, PC computers um, coming from different manufacturers. In the case of, uh, of Gibby Foods, we are also using a, a Schneider. Um, devices, uh, Schneider Harmony P6. Um, so Barbara provides uh, orchestration of applications on those devices, but it also provides the device management itself. So here at the left part of the, of the um, slide, uh, you can see some of the features that you can have with an edge computing platform like, like Barbara. You can have edge management, like grouping the devices, um, configuring remotely the networking of the device, which is 
something really, really important for um, for a um, for a distributed uh, industrial environment. Uh, remote accessing the the device. Um, configure the security of the device, security management. You can deploy patches, you can deploy security certificates. Uh, you can operate remotely the, the, the uh, industrial nodes. So you can start, stop, boot the, the devices. Um, you can update the firmware. You can create clusters of devices for higher availability. So you can do many things and fully remote. So. Any of these operations, if you, have, if you have to send people to the field, it can cost like uh, tons of, uh, of money. So with an orchestration platform, you can do these operations in bulk in 17 factories, 19 factories, 100 factories uh, in just a matter of minutes. But the most important thing is that we can make these devices, these devices intelligent. So we can deploy uh, different applications, uh, like the ones that you have here at the right of the slides. So you can have industrial connectors, like um, data connectors uh, of different protocols. You were saying that heterogeneity is the is the um, the most challenging part of your of your projects. So deploying. Uh, an edge computing infrastructure, and especially with Aviva Edge data store, you can have any protocol like Modbus, OPC UA, uh, Siemens, Magnet, um, IC protocols, and uh, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list. These are just examples, but you can get basically any protocol spoken by the device. Uh, and again, this is by deploying remotely, in this case, the Aviva Edge data store into that devices. So uh, you can also store data in the device. So um, you can store data in, in the uh, edge data store databases, but you can also um, deploy uh, parallel um, uh, data storage uh, databases like InfluxDB, MongoDB, and so on. Then you can do data processing on the device. So you can deploy, for example, um, Aviva IoT Edge product remotely into those devices and, and do a kind of mini SCADA uh, inside the, the device and, and process the data, clean the data, and so on. And you can have data ingestors. So you, from the devices, with the, with the data that you want, and maybe it's not all the data, but with the data that you want, you can ingest this data into, um, into Aviva Pi. You can ingest this data into Aviva uh, Connect or even into other uh, centralized platforms. So for that, we use uh, MQTT as a, as a data broker. So uh, we deploy an MQTT um, broker remotely into those devices, and then we configure remotely those, those devices so that they can start gathering real-time data, process it, it in the device, uh, enhancing security, and then sending the, the process to, to the cloud. So um, this is the architecture that, that we normally use um, with um, Aviva and, and Schneider products. So there are the, um, the edge computing nodes here. And then we, uh, we deploy the Aviva Edge data store. And then the Aviva Edge data store start capturing data from any protocol, using any protocol, and then injecting it into the, um, into the uh, centralized systems, like Aviva Pi or Aviva Connect. Um, also, I wanted to mention that we're also working with a very interesting uh, product from, from Schneider as well, which is the Schneider Software PLC, which can be deployed also on the, on the devices so that we can do real-time control, like, like if the edge computing infrastructure was, was a PLC. So um, doing this remotely, as you will see in the demo, uh, has several benefits, as you can see here in the right part of the screen. So first of all, zero touch remote installation so the one of the biggest challenges that that this project has uh was to to deploy uh hardware and software uh remotely 19 factories so with barbara as you will see in the demo this is zero touch is there's uh you can do it in in a matter of minutes so also the uh, cybersecurity compliance, because the, uh, the software, the Barbara software that goes into the edge computing nodes is fully certified with ICC 2443. So if you want to comply with cybersecurity um, by doing 
uh, it is with uh, with Barban infrastructure you will, will you will comply, and then you can have multi-site networking, multi-site monitoring and operation, and end of uh, at the end of the day saving a lot of time and saving a lot of cost in your uh, deployments. So um, before going into the demo, uh, just one final question for you. Um, what are the use cases that, that you have regarding data exploitation? So in the case of GB Foods, um, we are doing this for energy efficiency, saving, uh, saving uh, waste and saving um, energy. But there are other use cases like quality inspection, predictive maintenance, and others. So uh, please answer. Um, what are the use cases that you have regarding data exploitation? What are the, uh, the things we are, you are working in? We'll have one minute to, uh, to respond again. And after this, uh, we will go through the, uh, through the practical demonstration to see, um, to see uh, Barbara and, and Aviva in, in action and, and really understand what is the, uh, the benefit of, of edge computing and, and how this integrates into uh, into data projects like uh, like the one we've done with with uh, GB Foods. So yeah, most of you are, are doing energy efficiency. Um, some of us are, are doing predictive maintenance that quite typical and also quality inspection uh, using um, probably computer vision. So yeah, that's, um, I think energy efficiency is probably the cross-industry most important uh, use case based on the uh, on the sustainability goals of many of of your companies. So, with no further ado, I wanted to to share my screen and, and provide you with uh, with a simple demo of uh, to to really materialize what what you are uh, what I've been explaining. So, this is um, Aviva Connect. I, I guess many of you are are familiar with that. This is a uh, Aviva's cloud infrastructure for for, uh, for an scalable data processing. So we don't have any data here, right? So imagine that you need to gather data from one or several factories into into um, this infrastructure. How we will do it? So first of all, we will enter into um, Barbara's management platform. We will select the uh, the device that we want to use. Okay, so we support, as I said several devices. In the case of GB Foods, we're using an Schneider device. I will select what is the device that, that, I, um, that I want to use. I will download the, the software and install it in that device. That is, uh, it doesn't require any uh, IT or software expertise. So you can do it with a simple USB. You plug the USB, then the device is powered and you do it for the 19 factories. And once the device is on, then it becomes immediately manageable from the platform. So here in this uh, deployment, I have three factories, one in Madrid, one in Paris, one in Belgium. Um, uh, once I have the device there, I can do everything remote, okay? So I can log in into any of these edge devices and see how, um, how it's running, uh, what is the temperature, the, the RAM, the disk, everything. I can configure the network, as I said, um, I can have analytics, but the most important thing is I can deploy applications. So these applications are in what we call Barbara Marketplace. So as you can see, we have databases, we have um, uh, uh, data brokers, we have uh, AI algorithms, we have many things. But one of the things that we have, and is what we've been using in, in this, uh, in this um, uh, project, is uh, Aviva Edge Data Store. Okay, so Aviva Edge Data Store is a very interesting um, application that I'm going to deploy, and you will see how easy it is to, um, to deploy uh, an application at the edge. So I just, um, I just uh, select the application, I upload the configuration. Uh, so in this case, um, I'm an Aviva customer, so I have my client secret, my credentials to, to put it here. And then uh, I, um, I put the configuration of the, of the 
uh, application, which is the one saying what are the protocols that I want to use, uh, and I will and um, what are the, the protocols that I want to use, what is the frequency of the data capture and everything. So I passed, I paste here my configuration, and then I deploy, uh, I deploy the application to all the uh, to all the factories. Okay. So I send the application. The applications will pop up here, the Aviva Edge data store. Here it is. Now it is installing. And now the application has started. So um, if I go back here to my data services, I can see that now I'm reading real-time data. So I'm reading. Um, the um, RPMs of, uh, of a motor and the temperature. So if I go here, uh, I can view in my last, um, in the last five minutes, that is already starting real-time data. So the data is being read in real time, as you can see, uh, and being injected. And this, uh, this is done in just a few seconds for um, for uh, all my factories, okay? So this is something that with an edge computing, without an edge computing platform can take years. And now that you have Aviva uh, EDS in, um, in the device, then you may want to, to um, deploy more applications. So for example, you may want to deploy uh, a Grafana application, which is a dashboard application to be able to um, to uh, see the data locally in the node. So I can send more applications. Um, so here is uh, Grafana. And now that Grafana is, uh, is installed, I can log in remotely into the, into the edge computing node and uh, access the, uh, the local, um, the local um, Grafana dashboard here, and I'm remotely accessing this device and getting access to the data locally. So, uh, so yeah, I hope uh, that was interesting. Um, again, the, the idea is to have uh, an, a hybrid uh, infrastructure with, um, with cloud as well as edge devices, but in the case of the, of the edge devices, um, having an orchestration platform to remotely deploy Aviva applications, Aviva data connectors, and other applications make the project really, really scalable and really um, viable. So with that, uh, I hand over again to, to Ted, uh, because we have, I guess, some time for, for Q&A. Let's see if there are some questions. Yeah. No, it's perfect. We have about 12 minutes for Q&A. Love to see you. A demo like that where you're running it live and and, and it works. <laughs> you, you <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a video. I had a video in the back, but it, it, I hadn't uh, to use it, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you made it look easy, but I mean, it's supposed to be easier these days, right? With these tools and so forth. So uh, it was nice to see uh, a connect there. So in case. Of um, that was obviously a big part of the solution. It's, it's an agnostic solution designed by, designed, created, rolled out by Aviva recently. It's a very, very uh, solution for Aviva. It has connect data services that you saw. It has connect visualization services. It, uh, it's meant to be a platform to help you with these. Um, a couple of other things it does is it helps uh, manage your uh, access to your software and so forth and give you uh, also a development platform. Anyway, enough on that, but but uh, Barbara technologies and capabilities also are, are very impressive. So um, a lot of things are going on there behind the scenes. Secure environment, user friendly, uh, relatively speaking, it'd be hard for someone like myself, but that was great. Um, the, uh, to, uh, to go over is an interesting one. And Oreo, in one of your slides, you were talking about the value of the architecture. And um, kind of interesting these days because, you know, software has moved from really um, uh, CapEx to, to uh, OpEx, right, in, in the sense that, like, Aviva's software moved to a, a subscription-based model. 
And so the business cases are different. The um, coincidentally or not, the ROI seems to be much quicker now than ever. You know, um, organizations are able to conduct relatively controlled scope solutions like this, put them up, get the value quickly. So I guess it begs the question, like, as you're looking at this from your organization standpoint and you're putting the business case together, you're going to start, right, with a smaller scope and move on. But there is so much value in having this architecture that you've deployed and begun. So can you share any insights in terms of, like, how you quantified that or thought about that or sold that into other decision makers? That's a very good question. Thank you, Ted. Uh, yes, the, finally, we have considered uh, different architectural benefits in our business case. For example, and I will relate the answer to, to the last question in the poll, the last question we did in the poll. Uh, here in GV Foods, in that architecture, we want to use it not only for energy monitoring, but we want also to use it to cover additional use cases like the performance monitoring consolidation or to do some quality inspections. So the, finally, one of the things that we have considered in, in our business case is the benefit of using only one architecture, only one solution to cover at the same time with all of that solutions. And also, we have included another point related to the reduction in the number of the travels that we need to do to connect new devices to that architecture. So the, finally, that both points uh, are being considered in, in our business case and helped us align the, the, the project internally. Yeah, so if I can elaborate a little bit more, I, I think um, Uriel made, made a great point, which is um, having a, a scalable architecture for many use cases, and that requires IT and, and OT um, uh, people to work together. The, the other point is, is also very important. This um, architecture and the products that, that you choose for this architecture, in this case, Aviva and Barbara, needs to uh, help you with the, um, with the um, management of the life cycle of that infrastructure. So if you don't have like comprehensive UIs, uh, like the one that we see in Connect, if you don't have orchestration platforms, remote management, remote access, um, you may have a lot of hidden costs. And in some projects, we have calculated the um, the return of investment in uh, 300 or a little bit over 300 percent savings in the total cost of ownership uh, by doing uh, these projects with the tools that we've seen versus doing them by you know other uh, open source or, or uh, let's say uh, R and D uh, both. Um, uh, infrastructure, which is something that in many cases companies are, are doing, but having finalized products that helps you to, to do this, um, it's, it really has a 300% impact in the TCO. No, that's great. So it just makes those business cases easier and easier as you go on. Um, so some of the other things that uh, is cybersecurity. Um, uh, maybe a couple of remarks, uh, David, we can go to you first, just about uh, what that, that, that aren't obvious. And, uh, you know, did you, did, do you have any best practices that you could share or, or any, so anything that... Yeah, yeah sure. So, um, as Oriol uh, was, was saying, there is a standard call today, IC62443, which is a great starting point for any company willing to uh, to secure their ot it infrastructure so normally ot environments have been traditionally very isolated now we are connecting this to the it environment for for the obvious reasons you need to secure this whole infrastructure and ic62443 is a great standard to to follow so with um, Barbara and, and Aviva, um, we are able to meet um, those cybersecurity requirements out of the box. So all the communications are encrypted, all the firmware in the devices is encrypted, all the communications are outgoing from the OT to the IT. There are no incoming connections. Every connection is, is um, secured using single certificates per device. So, so 
all these checks that, that you need to follow if you want to, to fulfill IEC 62443, which I do recommend for any industrial company, are already out of the box um, available with, with those products. So um, I will say that my recommendation is to take a look into those, into this standard and, and ways to, to fulfill it. It's, it's pretty comprehensive. Great. Ariel, do you have any comments you'd like to share on that subject? If not, I have another question that came in. And it's regarding uh, sustainability goals. So we talked about energy management being critical and so forth. So that's uh, oftentimes uh, closely related to sustainability. Um, did, did you have any discrete sustainability goals coming in and or have you have you been able to share some of those within the organization uh, and gotten a, a pretty good reaction? Yes, uh, the sustainability strategy is in, our, in uh, one of our main focus in GV Foods. Uh, and uh, well, it includes different uh, work streams in which one of them uh, is the optimization of our resources. No? So we have clear targets, no? not only to reduce our energy costs, but also to reduce our uh, energy and our CO2 uh, footprints uh, in, in, in our company. So we have different targets along the uh, uh, next years, 10, 15 years. And uh, this is the reason why we have been able to, to speed up the start of that energy monitoring project and to, and to define such an ambitious architecture. Okay, great. Well, um, it, I think we're approaching the end of the uh, allotted time. Uh, if either of you have any final comments you'd like. Um, no, well, maybe to elaborate on, on what Uriel was saying, and we already saw that um, sustainability is probably number one use case on, across many of, of those industries. We, we are seeing, uh, again, numbers, really, really high numbers of um, over 200% uh, in uh, savings in, in materials, in, in waste, in, in many of these projects. So um, I would recommend every every company to start looking into into these use cases because with the architecture and the type of tools that we've seen these are really really um, viable and and they can be implemented uh, in a relatively nice time frame and and start providing value um, right away so yeah i think hopefully that that clicks in, in some of your uh, your minds and and we can start seeing more and more of these projects in, in your companies Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you both very much. Uh, it was an excellent presentation, uh, an excellent value of it, out of it, and we really appreciate your time today and sharing that with us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks you. everyone. Thank you, Uriol, David, and Ted. And for our audience, if you joined us late or if you missed anything during the webinar, don't worry because we will be sending you um, a link for the on-demand version of the webinar. This on-demand version of the webinar will be available within the next two hours. Um, we do hope you found the webinar informative. We ask you to share your feedback by taking a very small survey found um, in your webinar platform that you have available. Um, it's found in the survey widget at the bottom of your screen. And your feedback is very important as it helps us improve our programs. We are now concluding our webinar, but before you leave, um, also we have several handouts available for you that you may find um, interested. We have case studies, we have um, URLs that take you to everything that was discussed in today's webinar. And now um, we are concluding our webinar. We look forward to seeing you next time and thank you very much, uh, very much for joining us. You may now disconnect. Thank you very much. <laughs>